All right, you guys, we are now just chilling, taking a break. I'll tell you what, I have a newfound respect for Apple. What she's gone through in the last five and a half months or so, trying to keep this house project in order. Wow, um, she's gone through a lot. She's done a great job. I was only there for like three or four days and I was already kind of stressed out. We had to pick out tile and all kinds of stuff. And um, yeah, you know, that's just not for me. I'm pretty easy going. I'm happy with whatever, but anyway, we are here on the island. We're just chilling, uh, eating some good food, enjoying the ocean and some sun. And uh, there's a gym, a brand new gym. So we are working out. It feels really good to get back into the gym again. Uh, but anyway, I wanted to take this opportunity to intro um, some video footage that I wasn't able to share from last November 2017. We went out at night. We found a lot of really cool stuff. But of course, I couldn't share it with you guys because I didn't know where the memory card was. Anyway, I found the memory card and I wanna show you guys what we found. Again, it's from back in November 2017. Check this out. All right, so this is the first night that we're getting out looking for some uh, creatures here in Thailand. We're just on a quick walk, just walked away from the, um, the house. They're actually still doing a little bit of construction. So it was a little bit loud, so I didn't want to do my intro right there. And uh, the conditions are kind of weird tonight. It's a full moon, there's a little bit of a breeze, and it's in the low 70s. All conditions that are not good for finding animals, but the thing that is good is that this time of year, there are a lot of snakes out because the rice is ready to harvest. There's still standing water from the um, from the rains that basically just passed. So it could be a really good night. I just wanted to do a quick intro because we have a good chance of finding something. All right, let's see what this this uh, brings tonight. So up here we have a baby snake up in this bamboo right here. I don't know what it is. I can't tell from here. There's a good chance that it's a bronze back just because that's how we find a lot of bronze backs. But we are going to look for some stick that's long enough and see if we can get this little guy down. I'd like to see what that is. I'm not really sure. So let me find a stick. Yeah, it's a bronze bag. <laughs> I got knocked by the by the bamboo, <laughs> knocked me down. <laughs> so it is a bronze bag. That's the way we find them a lot of times at night. They have a white belly, so it's really easy to see them when they're sleeping up at the top of the tree. The white really stands out against the green. These snakes are active during the daytime. They're not so much of a nocturnal animal at all. So they're kind of easy to find when they're up in the tree like that. So that is it. It's a rear fang snake, but very small, pretty insignificant in my opinion. This one's just real nervous and whippy, but it hasn't tried to bite me, so I'm not really concerned about it. Beautiful red tongue. All right, we're gonna let this one go. Let me find the, the branch that knocked me in the head. Well, this one will do. There you go, buddy. Sorry for disturbing your sleep. And off he goes. So the puff-faced water snakes, they're very plentiful, especially this time of year because of the season with the rice and the whole bit. So there's a lot of standing water and this little pond area right here has, well, there were four. There's one here, down here in the mud. There's, let's see, that one went down. There's one sitting on top of the tuft of grass right there. You can just barely make out the band. And, there were two others, but they 
to merge themselves. I think I can get this one right here. This little tongs will reach without me falling. Yeah, okay, here we go. Oh, relax. Relax. So it's a real pretty one. Let's see if I can get this grass off of his neck without getting bit. Ah, oh, there we go. Really fat. Really, really pretty snakes. But we find a lot of these every time we're out here. So it's really not one of the super special exotics for me, because I've seen so many. But they're a really neat snake. And it's so cool that they're so plentiful out here. Those of you that are subscribed to the channel and following my videos, you may remember about, oh, maybe a year ago or so, I came out with Apple and her family to visit another family that was living adjacent to a river and they had a fish farm there. So they had some very, very significant rain uh, this past season, which ended only like four weeks ago or something. And the river actually flooded and it destroyed their house. So they had to relocate. So we're here visiting the same family, but in a different place. They've actually had to move and they're in a different house. And they caught a snake for us. Um, we just came out here just to socialize, so I didn't really come prepared for much. But they knew I was coming, they caught a snake, they got it in this bag right here. And um, I really don't know what it is, I haven't even looked yet. So I'm gonna check it out and see what it is. And we have a, oh, a redneck keelback. All right, so these guys are rear fanged and they can be quite toxic, but most of the time they're very reluctant to bite. So let's see how this goes. I have no tools and I don't recommend that anybody do this at home, but I'm going to manipulate this animal out and see how things go. All right, now these guys here, the Thai people here, they don't regard these as dangerous at all. Um, I've had this discussion through Apple translating, and these guys just kind of regard these as just like a, a harmless like garter snake or a water snake or whatever, but obviously they do have a pretty medically significant toxin to them. They're actually venomous and poisonous. Uh, they have the gland, so they do secrete some toxin in their saliva. So they have to chew to get that saliva into you. And because they eat toads, they have glands in their neck which uh, s secrete a poison that they get from consuming the the amphibians so it's pretty unique pretty interesting and that's that so this is kind of funny when you're walking around looking for snakes and you got your head down every once in a while you need to look up because you come across water buffalo <laughs> they're usually pretty cool but Sometimes if you startle them, you know, they, they may react not in kind. So you have to be careful and listen for that little bell that's around the neck, especially. But usually they're just standing there really quiet. And, you know, you're looking down, looking for animals. And next thing you know, whoa, too close. And you might get thumped. So that's a big, heavy animal. They're neat, though. All right. <laughs> so, so I think I found out the I real reason that we came over here. They had a wasp nest that was ready to harvest. Uh, people here eat this, this is normal food for them. So what's going on is they take fire and burn the nest. So that basically um, makes it safe. There's no adults flying around, no hordes trying to attack you. And then all the larvae are in here and they're all in different stages. So you've got 
the small white ones like this, this is considered the best eating out of the, the nest. These actually have food inside, so these are actually eating. These, some people eat it, some people don't. They, it's not considered the best. And then there are other further along in development, and so this is like almost a wasp. It has the legs and the wings and everything. These, I don't think anybody eats. This is not something that you would be consuming. So Apple's mom is going through and sorting them all out. We've got all the, like the prime ones in here and probably gonna be eating this for breakfast in the morning and probably mix them up with um, some scrambled eggs, some chicken eggs or something else. But I've eaten it many, many times. It's actually very good once you uh, convince your brain that it's not disgusting and then you just eat it for the taste it actually has a really good taste and very high in protein as well so i think this is the real reason that we came over here it's not about me it's not about snakes it's about getting this because you can see how intently apple's mom is working on stuff because she knows how good this tastes it's kind of a delicacy out here so anyway a little bit of food out here in isan Okay, so we found two really big stick insects. Now, Thai people believe that these are bad luck if they're in your house. Obviously, we're not around a house at all. So I am going to see if I can get this big guy, or girl rather, down. So now, it's doing that frozen position to where it's very, very cryptic. Oh, this one's going on top of my head. It feels weird. So I think the other one's sitting on top of my head. I can feel it. <laughs> All right, so I think we've messed with these guys long enough. Fun stuff. Creepy crawlies in the night. <laughs> All right, so. Oh, you like my head? Okay. And there you have the giant stick insect. That was fun. So, walking a little further here, we have a juvenile Boiga cyanea. Just starting to turn green. When these guys are hatchlings, they're an orange color. It's a rear fang species, but I've caught a lot of these out here and I've never had any try to have a go at me they've always been really really mellow and the night tonight is a little bit cooler temperature so that always helps with keeping the demeanor somewhat mellow great body weight this one's really healthy there's so many frogs out here they are everywhere so I think frogs are probably the main, main menu for this one. Here's a pretty rare one. This is a Sicilian, closely related to a salamander. We saw one of these earlier tonight. It was a roadkill one and it was, it's kind of a rare animal. You hardly ever see them and I was really saddened to only find one that was dead. 
And then a little while later, found this one right here. Very, very beautiful. Nice yellow stripe. It was kind of all covered with the dust from the road. So we rinsed it off and we found a decent place here to release it. It's a oh, very, very muddy area and that's what they like. So they eat insects, they eat termites and, um, and just various insects and that sort of thing. So I'm gonna let it go right here. So we are venturing out probably what is my last night in Thailand the last night that I'll have time to go out and look for snakes. We didn't start filming or do an intro yet because we're actually on the motorbikes and we are headed to a bit of a remote area. And the first snake that we saw crossing the road is a Cylindrophis, a pipe snake. Really, really pretty one, good size, very, very beautiful. That is quite a lucky find. These are not common out here at all. Ha, <laughs> so lucky. That's quite a start. Well, we haven't even really started yet. Well, I guess we have. So this is what we broke the ice with this evening. All right, so we got a, this is a new one for me out here. It's a kukri snake, oligodon. I don't know which species. There's a lot of different species in this genus. I don't know which one this is. It doesn't look like any that I've seen before. Their dentition is really crazy. Uh, they call a kukri snake because the teeth, not only are they rear fang, but they're actually pointed somewhat outward on either side. They eat rep basically reptile eggs, snake eggs is their main diet. And as they, chew that egg those teeth are bladed and they cut through the eggshell real easily they basically just stick their head inside the egg and uh, suck out the contents but wow this is really really lucky so here's another one I'm not a hundred percent sure I think it's some sort of keelback or water snake, but I just don't know exactly which one. It's very, very docile. It's another one. I've never seen this one out here before. I don't know what this is. This is the night of bizarre snakes. Beautiful snake though, really, really pretty.